name is David Creeve, Professional Services Manager with PointBridge. Uh, today we're going to talk about migration strategies while moving to Office 365. Uh, most organizations today plan for uh, both business and technical uh, objectives and constraints when uh, focusing on migration. Uh, what I'd like to talk about is uh, emphasizing more uh, on the user experience uh, when planning migration uh, and working through those strategies. Um, so the user experience is, is important uh, to uh, organizations when they're planning migration. Uh, and some of the primary reasons why the user experience is important is, uh, at the end of the day, um, users are, are not concerned with how the migration team planned and executed the migration. Their concerns are really focused on um, what their day one experience is going to be like and what their long term experience is going to be like. Um, so it's important that when we plan for migration, uh, to Office 365 that uh, we not only consider the objectives that have been uh, set forth by the business and, and any technical uh, constraints that we have, but that we also consider what that day one experience would be like and the long term uh, experience would be like. Um, so there are some ways that, that Microsoft uh, helps provide uh, benefits to organizations planning migration to Office 365. Um, Let's talk a little bit about more of what Microsoft has to offer, and then we'll talk about the things that, that are outside of uh, Office 365 that businesses should focus on uh, with regards to uh, user experience. Um, so today, Microsoft offers the ability to um, enable organizations to provide a simplified logon experience for their users. Uh, and that comes in the form of uh, Active Directory Federation Services, also known as ADFS. Uh, ADFS allows organizations to uh, allow their users to continue to use corporate credentials when uh, authenticating to the service, when authenticating to Outlook, SharePoint, uh, Link, um, all the same. And uh, that experience enables the user to not have to worry about a, a secondary logon or, or a password uh, to uh, connect to the service uh, initially or, or even long term. Uh, as some of you probably know, uh, when doing migrations to other service providers or, or just moving from one system to another and providing users with new logon passwords, uh, it can be a very challenging uh, go live experience. Uh, the biggest reason why it's challenging is probably the number one support ticket that comes in um, uh, on a go live uh, for a migration is, hey, what's my password? Or I didn't see you know, the paper on my desk that, that indicated what my password was or uh, if there was an email sent out with uh, that information. That can really cause a lot of uh, confusion for users, a lot of lost productivity, uh, and so on for that for that day one experience. So by Microsoft providing uh, ADFS, it really enables you as an organization to uh, provide that simplified logon for your end users, and, and, and one less thing that your help desk team has to worry about managing uh, for go live. Uh, the other thing that Microsoft provides is directory sync. Uh, it's the ability to basically sync your Active Directory environment uh, to Office 365. Uh, enabling your users to have a unified address book. So if you're planning a stage migration between on-premise and, and Office 365, um, you have the ability to uh, provide your users with uh, some initial coexistence experience, the ability to, to move, um, you know, maybe with your business unit, uh, but not with the rest of the organization to Office 365, but still be able to email and, and communicate with the rest of your organization through that uh, unified address book. The third area that, that Microsoft really enables uh, organizations to uh, um, have a, a better user experience is Exchange hybrid services. So today if you have Exchange 2003, 2007, or 2010, and you're planning a migration to Office 365, uh, you have the ability to deploy Exchange hybrid server, which is really just an Exchange 2010 server uh, that you deploy in your environment and create a federation group with Microsoft. Uh, this also enables better user experience by uh, providing your users um, with rich coexistence. So the ability to uh, move in a staged uh, approach uh, and be able to communicate, see free busy uh, information with on-premise users, uh, have secure communications between them and, and uh, uh, you while you're in Office 365. Uh, this definitely enables a, a better user experience, uh, whereas uh, with previous migrations moving from one system to another, uh, you may not have those capabilities. Um, so, so beyond what Microsoft has to offer, there are uh, additional options out there for, for those of you that have uh, external messaging systems. So uh, some examples of that are GroupWise or Lotus Notes. Uh, there are third-party tools out there, like Quest as an example, that enable you to 
provide that rich coexistence that Microsoft provides or enables you to uh, have if you have exchange on premise. So this rich coexistence tools enable you to um, continue to email in a secure way between on premise and online, enable you to share that, that unified address book. But most importantly, the, the biggest thing when doing a stage migration is uh, the ability to uh, have free busy information between on premise and online. So if you are a Lotus Notes customer or a GroupWise uh, organization, you have that ability to uh, coexist uh, and, and, and approach the uh, migration in a staged way. Um, if your technical or business requirements uh, require you to, to go uh, over to Flash Cutover, uh, then those things are less of a concern um, about what Microsoft tends to offer, like I mentioned earlier, is Directory Sync, which enables you to have that unified address book uh, and really not worry about those coexistence tools, but, but take advantage of those third-party tools to do